COVID-19, can we reduce the impact of this serious illness? My name is Dr. Phil Boyle. I'm an Irish general practitioner practicing with infertility since 1998. I am familiar with novel immune enhancing treatments as part of my practice. Patients tell me, doctor, I don't get sick anymore when I take this treatment. I used to get recurrent chest infections, but not anymore. This has led me to think that the main problem is not the coronavirus itself, but a dysfunctional immune response in those who become seriously ill. What is different about the 80% who recover compared to the 20% who become seriously ill? Why is their immune system malfunctioning? Could immune enhancing treatment prevent the 20% from getting seriously ill with COVID-19? Currently, we recognize several strategies we can apply to improve immune function. Make sure you're getting adequate sleep. Make sure you have a healthy diet with modest exercise. Reduce alcohol intake, avoid smoking and reduce stress. Possibly take some vitamin C, tablets or lemon juice daily with your water. These strategies are well recognized. But when it comes to the immune enhancing treatments I will talk about, it's a medically gray area, not generally recognized or treated by most doctors. In fact, the concept of balancing the immune system is more common among alternative medical practitioners. The strategy that I recommend is a combination of diet, supplements, assessment of adrenal fatigue, and assessment and treatment for endorphin deficiency. The diet you can do yourself, simply avoid milk, gluten, and sugar. Supplements are available over the counter for vitamin D3 and omega-3 at the doses you can see, and pregnenolone is an, another very useful supplement. Those marked in red, DHEA and naltrexone in Ireland are available only by prescription. But remember, this treatment strategy is a bit like a vaccine. You need to take it ideally before you get sick. As we age, there is a drop in vitamin D levels, pregnenolone and DHEA levels fall, and endorphin levels fall. I suspect this is the reason why the elderly population do poorly with COVID-19. Our dietary strategy, we tend to follow the direct-ms.org strategy, and there's a fantastic cookbook available at their website to provide insight of recipes that are dairy-free, gluten-free, with minimum sugar. Vitamin D3, 1,000 units every day, or 25 micrograms, is the most effective dose, confirmed by a study in the British Medical Journal looking at a meta-analysis, how to prevent acute respiratory tract infections. Interestingly, higher doses were less effective. Many people take too high a dose of vitamin D and 1000 IU every day seems to be the best. Clinically, I recommend omega-3 with an EPA of 720 milligrams daily. This link it shows where you can get a low cost, high level of EPA every day. Adrenal fatigue, if you're too busy, too tired, or too stressed for too long, you're more at risk of developing adrenal fatigue, especially if this is accompanied by sleep deprivation or a chronic illness. You can try and judge this clinically. I recommend a test through my practice where we could measure DHEA and cortisol levels to be certain who requires treatment, and this is the best way, but not easy for most people to obtain, so a clinical assessment is reasonable. This is a complicated diagram demonstrating the biochemical pathways for both pregnenolone and DHEA and their central role for making a whole array of steroid hormones. The key point to note from this is with chronic stress and advancing age, these two building blocks become depleted and that results in immune dysfunction among other problems. I recommend pregnenolone 100 milligrams daily. 
if you are over 50 years old or suspect you may have adrenal fatigue. The same applies to DHEA, but in Ireland you need a prescription for this. In the United States you can get 25 milligrams twice daily without prescription, again, if you're over 50 or clinically suspect adrenal fatigue. But look out, especially for women, if you take pregnenolone and DHEA and you don't need it, excess levels will increase testosterone and cause acne and body hair. So be careful, or if these things do develop, stop the pregnenolone and DHEA and the acne and body hair disappear. Low-dose naltrexone treatment was developed by Dr. Bernard Bahari, an immunologist and neurologist from New York in the 1980s. He found that low-dose naltrexone will give you a threefold surge in endorphin levels by taking 3 to 4.5 milligrams nightly. He successfully treated patients who are HIV positive, those with MS or other autoimmune illnesses. And this is covered at the website lodosnaltrexone.org. There's a publication by alternative-therapies.com outlining Bernard Bahari's story, which is very useful to read. Some mainstream doctors took on the concept, and one in particular is Professor Jill Smith, a professor of gastroenterology from Penn State University. And she had two placebo-controlled clinical trials with low-dose naltrexone treating Crohn's disease in 2007 and 2011. The photographs are striking. On the left, we have a, a red inflamed bowel mucosa that was completely resolved with low-dose naltrexone within the space of four weeks. It is this profound anti-inflammatory effect we're looking for that may reduce the severe inflammation in the lungs and help patients who, who are positive for COVID-19. These images from the 2011 study show endoscopic and histological evidence of improvement following treatment with low-dose naltrexone. The uh, first two images are placebo, and the second two images are naltrexone at baseline and following 12 weeks of treatment. So in the very last image, we can see how the normal architecture and histological appearance was restored following treatment with low-dose naltrexone. It was compared to placebo and found to be nearly 90% clinically effective and nearly 80% endoscopic response rate, with 33% of patients going into remission with severe active Crohn's disease. How do you figure if you may benefit from taking low-dose naltrexone? Well, if you have clinical endorphin deficiency and a cluster of symptoms with a combination of low energy, low mood, anxiety, difficulty sleeping, an autoimmune illness, or if you're female, premenstrual symptoms or endometriosis. Low-dose naltrexone is prescription only, and it is not licensed as an immune-modifying treatment, so most doctors currently don't prescribe it. The dose varies from 3 to 4.5 milligrams nightly, and initially you may have sleep disturbance for the first week while you're adjusting to treatment. Low-dose naltrexone is best taken as a preemptive treatment or as soon as possible following a positive test for COVID-19. It is clinically less effective when you're under severe stress from an acute illness, so take it early is better. So in summary, this strategy is clinically effective to improve immune function with good publications and clinical experience to support the concept. It is untested, however, for COVID-19. This treatment has potential to save thousands of lives if it is found to be effective for COVID-19 patients. I recommend starting treatment before the illness develops or as soon as you have a positive test for COVID-19. Thank you for your attention.